Hello and welcome my friends. I hope everything is going well. Let me just adjust a couple of things and when you come in live and you see what's going on, let me know what you uh, hear, what you see. Is everything sounding good? Does everything sound proper? I am checking all my levels right now. The video looks okay. The stream looks okay. Um, YouTube side that looks live. Hello and welcome. Hello. Thank you for joining. Stream looks good. Okay, cool. If I hear any comments in the chat, then I will get back to you on that. I see one person is watching. That's probably just myself right now. My computer and everything seems to be good as well. The input levels look okay. Mic looks good. All right. It's a little bit technically difficult to start up all this stuff and just want to make sure that it's all working well. All right, so that's that side of things done and taken care of. Now, I realize it's after midnight. I'm basically starting this on at 2 a.m. or not 2 a.m., but uh, midnight as of Saturday morning. This is a live stream to cover the photography and all that stuff from Montreal. Thank you, Vel, for joining. I know that you had just messaged me and commented on the Instagram live and said you fell asleep. But now we're here, so that's cool that we can do this instead of that. <laughs> Nothing really missed, truly, because it's all saved on the, uh, the the replay anyhow. But I do appreciate it, as always, joining and being part of things that are going on. So let me get on with this show. And I just want to... Uh, oh, that's, that's appreciated. See, I'm doing this with my sleeves rolled up because you are now awake. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is this is just for you. How do you <clears throat> bullshit? <laughs> how can you how can you tell I'm full of it today? <laughs> oh, and I just spilled some. That's okay. Well, we're, we'll get on with it anyways. As professional as I am, uh, the big screen TV. That's right. So YouTube is. Is, this is something I mentioned in some of my Instagram videos, as you remember, for a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about uh, how Instagram audiences can't join from larger devices, from their, their TVs. They can't stream from other um, things like that. So it, they do really rely on the application that is uh, essentially just limited to the phone. So with a YouTube, this is why I needed to do a stream where I can also uh, broadcast to my friends that are here on the YouTube space. So that way I have a showcase of the photos both on Instagram and on YouTube. So thank you very much for that and joining. I should probably put a link on my YouTube or my Instagram that I'm actually live on YouTube. So let me just see if I can create one of those. <laughs> Typically don't have access to that kind of thing, but I'm going to see if I can figure it out here. I'm going to turn in on my phone close the chat uh, there we go so let me just look at the camera for a second there we go oh, i didn't do the stream the screenshot properly <laughs> yeah advertising to other people at the same time especially considering it's midnight like that's a it's a difficult kind of thing to do because people are not always like on the, the, uh, the notifications. They don't actually know when I'm live. So to miss these streams at the time is a little bit uh, tricky. So I'm just going to post to my Instagram right now that I am actually on here live. And that way people can join. Join me live. I guess I need to put a link too, don't I? See, sorry for everybody else that's watching this after the fact. See, this is part of the part of the trouble of doing these things kind of on your own is you have to kind of, you have to navigate through a lot of this stuff uh, as you go and um, not being prepared ahead of time means I have to do everything while I'm actually live. So that's hilarious. I'll post that to my story. That's cool. Okay. So welcome, welcome to everybody watching afterwards. Yes. Good idea. Uh, <laughs> don't break my heart i almost believe the photos were for me 
I am sarcastic. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I have that level of like, oh, let's be really romantic and sweet for no reason or just casually. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't really do that. <laughs> uh, so if that ever happens going forward, I'm absolutely kidding. Uh, <laughs> to my friends that are here, let's, let's go through this. So this is PMA Magazine. I spoke with them uh, over the weekend and, um, see if I can make, can I make this bigger? Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter. Well, I'll just move mine over. So I talked to them over the weekend. Uh, we've got a really good relationship between myself and some of the guys that are working there as well as the owners and all that. So we teamed up and I put my logo in the corner. So actually, let me see if I can Uh, there, let me see. Custom layout. This one. There we go. <laughs> so my lo my logo is in the corner there for the magazine. And I just wanted to showcase some of the photos that I've taken that I did take at the Montreal Audio Fest 2024. A lot of the photos are on my Facebook page, which not everybody has access to. And that's why I wanted to do this is to showcase some of that photography. Um, I'm going to have to move my window over and I'm going to change the dimension of the web page keeping the same ratio. There we go. Okay. Now I can move my chat back into frame. Okay. We're doing good. So Montreal audio fest was, uh, last weekend. Uh, I was incredible. I got to go out there with my friend Jay and meet up with a bunch of people that were showcasing at the event uh, the event is now 35 years old. It was a 35th anniversary sort of show. So that's incredible. Uh, it was really nice to see everything there. Uh, as usual, the B and W Bowers and Wilkins team brings a car that they currently uh, install their speakers inside of. So this is the uh, Austin Martin DB12, uh, incredible car there. Um, there's a speaker in the back. You can barely see it back here. There's not much zoom in there actually. Um, but it is colored in a racing green. So that's pretty incredible. This is outside one of the windows of the, uh, of the event. I don't remember which room this is, but this is one of the rooms on the 10th floor and that's where the event takes place. This is the uh, our friend Silvio from uh, Artist Cloner with his new steampunk theme uh, speakers as well as outfit. If you see, our friend is wearing the goggles and he's got other apparel on him, the, the gears and work on his chain and outfit. So it isn't just the speakers in theme, but he was actually dressed in theme as well as the rest of the room. So quite impressive, very, very great sounding speakers. I know these were very popular and um, a lot of people like the way these things look. Open crossover in the bottom. So you can see all the components, the piping from front to back to keep the compression from the front and back baffles. The, the speakers are connected through these terminals here. The tweeter is a ribbon AMT type tweeter that open to this space. So this is all open back tweeter with felt and soft materials around the edges of this so you don't get any baffle step or diffraction off the the front uh really incredible stuff like i said open open to the crossover on the bottom the network board all that stuff is exposed the light is added for the show i'm sure it doesn't come with its own light but again the room has its own decoration that matches into the the theme, uh, my apologies. I'm getting click happy over here. Uh, so there's a room that talks about his history, a bit of the past, and um, how the company developed him personally. If you can, if you see here, I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in. There's okay, there's not much zoom on these ones, but right here at the bottom of the room, this is a photo that i took of his room a couple of years ago and he has it displayed in this room of his progress as well as on the card here if you see in this one location 
So this photo and this photo are both of my uh, of my photo library that I sent to him last year so that he could make this card and display in his room. So I'm truly honored that um, some of these designers and owners are taking on my work to be featured in their future displays. It's quite incredible. Uh, very, very surreal, actually. I can't barely believe that someone is willing to to do that kind of thing that I they appreciate my work so much that they're willing to showcase it in such a way it's I never thought that it was going to be possible so altitudo room amazing I know it's a lot of stuff in this room but this room actually sounded really good there's an ice cream machine here that PMA puts on at the bottom of their the escalator for the show so you can come down have an ice cream or grab a coffee on the other side is really great stuff uh boris and acoustics of course with peter and uh win and uh we had such a great time in this room on the friday night i did a live session from montreal on that friday night and as some of you and vel knows it was an absolutely incredible experience the live demo and sound was so incredible that uh, I, I was at a loss for words, to be honest. Like it was uh, unexpected and brilliant all at the same time. Fantastic speakers. A couple of photo opportunities in this room we can probably scroll through later. They will pop up. This is one of my early favorites from the show. Some of the lines match up really well. And this curve here shows that the cabinet is leaning back into the space as well as the front so it's framed up in such a way that a lot of these lines intersect uh, that's my my style of photography and um, this one turned out to be very good uh, our friend david solomon from cobas was at the show he's a main sponsor of many many of the shows he gets to speak with people about the music and other things like that so uh, I snapped some of these photos when he was talking with the crowd and um, some of them turned out pretty good. I guess the one, this one looks pretty good. Some of the other ones, you know, like you catch someone, they're making a silly face and, you know, you don't really want to keep much of those. So, Also, does anybody hear any music in the background? Does my mic pick up the background sound or no? Because if it doesn't, that's okay. I don't know if it, all of it is copyright free and I would rather this video not get copyright strike or anything like that so let me know key audio brought their powered tower speakers so this is a module on top of a base module the whole system comes with a remote control which is over here on the table uh, the point of having it is to create a cardioid base wave which eliminates the back base radiation which means that all of the bass sound power comes from the front of the baffle and moves forward into the room and you don't have any kind of bass reflection problems. Um, this, is, this is actually a really good option for incredible sound and bass because the system is almost all in one. You provide a streamer and it plugs in digitally to the towers and the towers handle absolutely everything else. Volume, preamp control, DAC control, uh, in-room correction control volume with this knob. So all you need is a streamer added to the system and you get all of your professional sound. Not even professional sound, like hi-fi quality sound from these speakers. They're all DSP controlled and everything is done inside the boxes. So are they expensive? Yes. Uh, is it a good compromise for an entire system of components? Also, yes, because you don't see hardly anything on the floor except for these few wires and then that's it uh vtv is saying without my friend vel geez i don't know why i say that vel is just a lot easier uh, i don't think i hear the music it's not needed for the stream i know it's there to keep me focused yes i do use the music for myself it's not necessarily for the audience because not everybody's going to like my sense of music so that's okay we are live it is friday it is pretty casual please i see three people watching or at least it's showing me that there's people here you can comment and give some feedback on the stream or some music or have any kinds of questions at all, then please feel free to leave me a question or comment. Uh, even after the fact on the replay, if you see something that you like or whatever it happens to be, please leave some feedback. As long as it's respectful, then I don't mind anything that we have to talk about. Um, I do have issues with things that are more self-centered and 
or nonsensical, those kinds of things are not going to last on my channel. I'm not simply here to become popular. I would rather provide a channel that has uh, interesting or informative information rather than it just being a point of a billboard or bulletin board for people to just say whatever they feel like saying that that can be saved for other social media platforms. My channel is going to be specifically about educational things and topics that relate to enhancing people's lives. I don't necessarily want to entertain somebody's narcissism on my platform. As I take a sip of my iced lemonade, yes. Again, with the steampunk theme, Audio Note UK, fantastic room. I'm dabbling a little bit more with this, like, people in the shots. You can see that's typically not my style, but I tried to open it up a little bit and take a few different angles of things. Um, I did share my stream on my Facebook. So I just want to check that for a second and make sure that it's still loaded. People can come and watch. It is after midnight here, Eastern standard time, but I know on the West coast it is still only like three, uh, 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock, nine o'clock. It's about three hours different. So I'm about, three hours or two hours earlier than my normal stream time. Just want to make sure that it, it is posted and live. Yes, it is. Oh, it is up and posted. Should be in the streams. Cool. The TAD room was fantastic. I got to meet the PR rep and some of the owners from PAB, PAD Hi-Fi, which is a North American rep and distributor for ta uh, TAD components. Fantastic opportunity to hear the system um really good photos that i was able to capture in that room as well some new speakers that they're showcasing a little bit smaller than their top of the line but also very very capable uh really i'm you know there's 202 photos in this folder so i'm not necessarily here to um bore everybody um i just wanted to come on live because i know that my audience here on youtube is growing a little bit i have been seeing a lot of increase in subscribers and comments and people are starting to see my channel and my name out there in media where over the weekend in montreal i got to meet with audiophile junkie i got to hang out with jay a little bit more I got to see Thomas and Stereo. There were a number of other YouTube people that were present at the event, as well as a whole host of other uh, reps and people that I know well from the business and from the industry. So I wanted to do this kind of stream now to cover Montreal, even if people watch it on the replay, which is really great. And I appreciate that. Uh, hopefully everybody can find the stream well after this is over. But I wanted to do this live uh, now because I have the time and also because I want to allow my subscribers to see the photo f content from the show that isn't available on YouTube. It's only posted to my Facebook page or my Instagram is even slower because as you can see, the ratio for these photos is quite tall and Instagram doesn't display them well. So PS Audio there. These are the FR10s. I believe these are the fr 30s, the FR40s are bigger than these with four woofers. The 10s are smaller, uh, smaller di diameter woofers here. So they essentially look the same, except for the tweeter location is up here, mid range is down here. This one, it's reversed, mid range is here, tweeters here, and the diameter of the woofers is larger. When this one, I believe, doesn't have a passive radiator, I don't remember seeing one. Uh, Kimber Cable, uh, Emotivo was out in full effect. They had a, a really big room, showcased almost all of their products. As you can see, this table is pretty much lined with products. You've got the Basex 1, 2, 3, 4. I believe this is a 7 or a 6. Then, it, you know, all the way down the line, you get to see everything. Fantastic room. Lots of people coming to visit my... 40 minute long live, not live video, but walkthrough video from Montreal showcased exactly how busy these rooms are. So it was really great to see that. I ended up getting some pretty good photos of the Emotiva stuff. This one's one of my favorites. That's the new speakers with the new baffle design, the new hardware covers, new drivers. 
really good stuff. There's the front end, the whole family of new speakers there. That's the Emotiva Airmotive X series. Of course, they use these hard consonant sounds in English language to name their things. Like motorcycles have a GSXR, Type R, Type S, like really harsh sounding stuff for naming schemes. And that's, I think that's just the thing of English, but you know, it's what it is. Um, this room presented by Tricell. Enterprises had lots of brands, Audio Vector, Acapella, Fine Audio, AccuPhase, uh, Advanced Paris, the Fez Audio. There's a really good set of tube amps off to the side here. I'm not sure if I gave them a photo for that or not. There's the Audio Vector, not on this roll. Moon Audio with Estelon speakers, fantastic. More Borisons there, different angles. You see that I'm trying to use the angles here to match the gear. So you see the back of this one, the front of this one, the baffle on the back edge are just barely touching here. What can you say? Your boy's got some photo skills. I, uh, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, the Bryston room, I got to talk with Blair that night. It was really cool to meet up with somebody who also does some content and media. This room was really incredible. These are actually brand new towers. The larger ones are on this side. These ones are a little bit smaller. Um, they ended up sounding really great in the room, so they kept them in place. Really incredible. So there's a nice shot that I got from this room. I actually had them turn the lights on for me in this room so I could capture everything. Nice little detail there on the focals. <laughs> well, I mean, if I compose this right, that's a pretty good shot on its own. This one too. Uh, the professional gear that Focal makes was on display as well. They're not just a home audio brand. They do produce car audio. I believe they even produce marine audio so you can have Focal speakers on your boat. So it's a kind of brand that kind of that really does everything. They 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 are capable of producing all kinds of speakers for lots of different environments. PS Audio with the new subwoofers. You see these are dual 8-inch subwoofers. The PB or BP. BP8 they're called for bipolar, meaning two 8s. And they're dual opposed 8s with the T800 Towers. Imagine series. So really both of these photos are a bit redundant. This gives you a size comparison, but however, I like this shot better. Uh, and I got really good details <laughs> you can see the weave there and if you zoom in even further you can see how it's actually pressed to the cone so it's really really something plus the bookshelf uh we'll leave this little part out <laughs> uh gentleman here setting up the oracle turntable and eon art amps plus the gershman acoustic speakers i'm a brat of course i mean i'm not used to having like taking photos with people in it. So I kind of, sometimes I'm not really looking at all the details, but you know, the details are there. Well, what am I going to say? <laughs> Gershman Acoustics Black Swan 30th anniversary, 30th edition, I believe. Polk Audio 700s plus some Denon gear. These are probably set up in the room um, sponsored by Denon and the Massimo Group. They were playing the Nirvana Unplugged album. My visit with Audio Note and Daniel, that video is also on YouTube. You check that out. A couple sound demos in there. Another person in the shot. So this new for me is I don't normally put people in the photos, but I'm starting to kind of dabble with it a little bit. Normally it's just static objects. When people are moving around, I have to pick the right opportunity or moment. Otherwise you have to shoot like... 20 times to make sure they're not making a funny face or something looks embarrassing or sometimes you have to ask permission to have people in a photo things like that so uh i'm learning a little bit more about having people in photos rather than just gear however it is a learning curve so it will take some time before i get that right um Spendor and Mission, 
uh, JBL again, this turntable is really awesome. Um, the aesthetic for the gear matches the turntable. This techniques room, I got one of my favorite shots of the show is this one here because I included the logo for the shot of the company on the top of the speaker quite well. It's a small detail, it's just something that I like doing. <laughs> a triangle speakers. Um, I'm getting messages from my Facebook now. So, and soon, need to answer this right away. Um, yes, I'm still dealing with selling gear. And things like that. So there's a lot of stuff happening at the right time, all at the same time. Um, so this is the Harkin audio room with the really incredible turntable, plus these new speakers, Stein, I believe, Stein speakers. Um, really, really cool solid wood waveguide, plus what looks like SB acoustic drivers in two different cabinets. So this is a two-way cabinet with a base cabinet underneath. Pretty well designed. Um, yes. So this is a solid, <laughs> solid wood carved multiple layer turntable, which is really, really awesome. Baltic birch, uh, all the mechanisms, it's really good mechanism tone arm here. I don't know much about it. This was featured in, um, uh, audiophile junkies, uh, website or his, his videos. Uh, I'm just leaving the name for this contact wow it's really really cool i think i have another shot of it here somewhere there we go so yeah they were um he was he was showcasing this turntable in some of his videos so then when i um i went around the show afterwards i went to actually find this turntable and i mean i'm glad that i did because i mean look how incredible this looks and apparently this tone arm, this mechanism here at the back end is actually really impressive for some reasons that I don't know, because I'm not really a vinyl person. I have no idea. And um, it, it's uh, even at its basic, at its most basic, we don't appreciate much else. And I don't understand much else. The The platter itself is quite incre incredible. Uh, I mean, obviously, this is carved out for this mechanism. Underneath here, there's some mechanisms for the motor and everything. These buttons and lights here are also carved out from the platter. So that's a lot of really technical work. I can, I can imagine this is an expensive piece. But for itself, just for its own sake as a piece of artwork, that's a really, really nice turntable. Again, we see the exposed crossover components here at a different angle of the artist cloner speakers. Really awesome stuff. Um, I was able to get this this photo of the name of the speakers. Now, this is special in a way because, as many of my my friends know, uh, in, at least in media, a lot of photography work that I've done is done with my phone. So. The beauty of having a phone and doing photography is, one, it's really small. It's much, much smaller than a point-and-shoot camera or a camera with a large lens. So you can get the camera into different areas that you wouldn't normally be able to. If you're shorting, no, shooting normal photography, the camera is heavy, first of all, but then the lens adds a certain length. So this shot was actually done with my phone upside down, almost blind, where I had to look across the across the camera and focus it in such a way and i know the te the the characteristics of my phone that i'm able to actually hold the camera steady enough and capture it in such a way to get the back panel of the speakers now i don't know if you're ever going to see a back a back uh angle from th these towers there's not too many other people that are going to show this or will have this angle basically because i'm thinking about it more so than a lot of other people would so you see a lot of the front angles, but you don't actually see much of the back in other people's photography. So makes all his own amps. He's got a music server here, power distribution, all this kind of stuff he makes. This is all artist cloner, really incredible gear. 
Moon Audio, of course, and Estelon Towers. These are some of my favorite towers. Just an absolutely beautiful shape. They are a composite marble com composite. Um, so they're a very, very heavy cabinet. They're using Accuton drivers. I don't know enough about their internals, no, nothing about the crossovers. Uh, a room, this is actually a funny picture. So I see four watching the stream. No comments, though. That's funny. Say something. Somebody just type it in. Say, hey, nice stream. I hear you fine. Or yes, I can hear the background music. Um, so the, in this photo, I was uh, I convinced the guys in the room, Peter and Wynn, to turn turn off the backdrop because the backdrop has a really strong sense of lighting. And sometimes the photos and cameras can't differentiate between a, a bright background and a dark foreground. It's really hard to get your contrast right. So I asked them to turn the lights off where you see in most of my other shots, which are in the previous, in the previous, in the folder. Um, <laughs> thank you, Val, for being like the only person who's commented like 12 times on my stream. I appreciate it. Um, the contrast is hard to get. So you see the photos in the other pictures, the background's lit up, but I'm shooting sideways. So shooting straight on, you could never see the front of the driver because everything is black and they're not lit up enough. Um, so I had them turn off the backdrop here to see what this would look like. And that's what happened. Again, the grand utopia room, amazing room to listen to. That's the kind of demo that you don't want to miss. <laughs> yes so i see that there's numbers of people watching but nobody's saying anything so it could be that like if you're watching on a tv uh then you can't i don't know how you would comment like how do you comment when you're watching on the app on a tv is it uh is it oh yes hello my friend i'm glad that you are here watching i am i really appreciate that that's awesome to see you thank you um yeah i don't know how to comment if people are watching on a device like a a tv or another you know what i mean sometimes if you're watching passively then it's not possible to leave a comment because the interface doesn't allow it it's it's meant for viewing it's not meant for replying so being live on youtube and then observing on a tv or a device where you can't type then i guess that makes sense i'm still happy that people are here so don't get me wrong I'm not upset. I'm be like, oh my God, if you're not going to say anything, take off. No, I, I don't, I don't feel that way. This is just meant to showcase the photos. Again, this, this is all part of the article that I, I sent the photos off for PMA. You see here in this photo, you see me in the background actually taking the photo. <laughs> I was all in, all in white this day with my camouflage pants, but I did this shot on purpose where one of the other shots, this angle was closer together. And in this shot, I actually got myself in the reflection because, you know, I do that once in a while. It's just one of those things. It's part of my style. <laughs> so some of us put in extra effort cough. That's funny. <laughs> uh, my buddy, James, this is awesome. So at the end of, um, at the end of Friday night, there was this after party where there they was all um, <laughs> it, it was all uh, 70s themed like disco kind of music or whatever. And we're all supposed to dress up in uniform or some people had like these outfits on. And I caught up with my buddy here for a, a drink and uh, got it a little bit in uniform, a costume. And uh, yeah, this happened. I, I mean, I didn't dress up too much. I do have a bit of a suit coat on, but <laughs> This moment was a lot of fun and Montreal Audio Fest is a lot of fun and it's very much like a, a family of people. So it's, it's nice to see that. Uh, it's nice to see everybody come out and do that kind of thing. Let me see. I, I like how the painter, uh, painter signs their work. Um, where... Oh, yes, with the reflection. Gotcha. <laughs> Oops. I have to scroll back through this. I hit one of the buttons by accident. Um, yes, we were quite far into this one, actually. A little more than halfway, I believe. Uh, what else? What else we got here? Daniel says... 
got on YouTube and seen that you were live. Said, oh, ass, live. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Really, I do. Um, I don't go live all that much, but when I can, then I like to showcase, especially with the photos, because not everybody's on Facebook, and I understand why they're not on Facebook. So I figured, why, you know, why not include some of this in my other platform on the occasion, especially when I do photos, so that my audience, um, my audience can see it in a different place. So, uh, Lilium speakers, not Lilium, Lee, Lee, Lee May, the May audio with these really, really cool ribbon drivers. This is like the system sounds really incredible. The one thing that I don't particularly like about the speakers is they only sound good if you're sitting in one spot. Like the the sweet spot's very narrow because of the curve baffle and radiating pattern. But if you're in that spot, it is really incredible. Which I did sit for a while as you can see with this photo. <laughs> There's an audio quest demo, all the cables and everything is turned backwards so you can switch and swap and listen for differences. I mean, hey, if you can hear the differences, all the better to you. The SVS room, this is one of the first times that SVS was showing off their system in an actual room with a dealer. So that's really cool. Canadian distribution now. So you can order in Canada and it's fulfilled by Canadian, um, <clears throat> Canadian distribution. So this one's a pretty cool shot. Uh, the YouTube community will love this one. So... Let me just explain. So at the event, at most of these events, like Expona and Florida and Capital and all that stuff, our friend Audiophile Junkie, you can see here on the end, this far left side, I guess that's the left side, um, is at many of these shows. Goes to cover the rooms, shoots videos. I always admire what he's doing. I appreciate what these guys are doing. And... Um, <laughs> hold on hold on vel's like audio's favorite boy band <laughs> oh my god oh my god <laughs> oh there's a thumbnail for you oh my god that's hilarious thank you so much i'm glad <laughs> i'm glad i'm not the only one that has a sense of humor about this stuff. This is really awesome. Um, yeah, exactly. Aud audio's favorite boy band. That's hilarious. And then this favorite token bad boy. So this is the referral to the shirt that I'm wearing is a sleep token shirt for the metal band. So yes, thank you. Thank you very much for that. That's hilarious. Um, so yeah, about about the, the photo, we were all walking around. Thomas was teamed up with uh, uh, Le Studio du Son, which is a, a store that's in the Montreal area. He's showcasing some of his amplifiers for Galleon, um, the A75, the T120, uh, the tube amps, solid state amps, class A amps that he has. There was a preamp that was there. I don't know if that's much announced yet, but it was at the show. So anyways, a lot of us are around at these shows and every once in a while we happen to be in the same spot so when I saw kind of like everyone in the same spot, I had to do this photo. I had to ask these guys for a picture and we all ended up together in the photo. So there it is. It's a very special moment in hi-fi. That's hilarious. Uh, Audiophile Junkie and I went on to like check out the, uh, the PS audio room afterwards. Of course, there were some issues where the room was not 100% dialed in as of Friday, and it was a completely oversight thing. Nobody even realized what was going on. Everything looked correct. So without going through 20 steps of uh, troubleshooting at the last minute, things were missed. So we went back in together, and I got some of these shots of him listening to the system. Again, just trying out some photography things, and it turned out pretty well. Uh, Bliss Acoustics, again, great room. Niagara System, very, very expensive. I can't even tell you how much. Uh, apparently, this Griffin Audio preamp here in the system was one of the least expensive items in the whole system. So 
that will tell you something if you know anything about gear. No. And this comment, for those who don't know, this is from... This line comes from the very, very beginning of my Instagram live video where let me tell you the backstory. Vel's probably like, why did I even say that? I'm not going to ask you to try and explain. Um, let me just get something else in the background here. There we go. So this comment comes from the beginning of my Instagram live video that basically was a Friday night. Everything was shut down. I was basically wandering through the hallways. And as I wandered down through the first hallway, my, my Instagram was already live, but the, the, the noises and conversation that were going on weren't broadcast. So it wasn't saved. So the first part of that conversation before I made the joke about swimming with the ducks was this comment about uh, the guys that were walking in the opposite direction were talking about how nice it would be in the summer and you could go for a swim. Uh, they do have a pool in the other section and all these areas will be, you know, like a lot warmer and all that kind of thing. So when they mentioned going for a swim in the pool, I walked by in the direction and we were in this hallway and I made the jokes be like, yeah, you could swim with the ducks. And they, you know, it was this, this whole moment and <laughs> you kind of like had to hear what happened leading up to this comment in this section where I was talking about swimming with the ducks and those guys were just laughing because it was a conversation kind of in eavesdropping and I was walking down the hallway at that time so yeah I, I I'm pretty uh, sometimes I catch the references and sometimes not <laughs> oh the listening room yes the the, fo the photo with um audio file junkie in the hat uh kef was on board that's another accuphase amplifier there with the stable 33 turntables a very great system uh son ultimate uh macintosh system a few really great photos in this space as well um i didn't send them all of my best photos of course because i want to keep some for myself but um these are fantastic photos. The, the room is well lit. There's really cool effects from the reflections, you know, stuff like this. Uh, this is one of my favorites with this glint of light and the tape on the floor. And, of course, someone not paying attention to the yellow line. But, you know, can we really fault them for that? They're trying to take a photo. So is that, you know, can we, can we not bother? <laughs> So I was trying to take some of these shots and of course somebody's in the way, but you know, it happens. Um, yes, sir. They are, they, they have these multiple, multiple drivers. They have woofers in the back, which are deflected by the curve of this brace that's attached to the front of the speaker here, you see. And these are mid range domes and tweeters that are in an array. So I will say that they sound better directly in front of them sitting down because if you stand up then you get all this kind of phasing problems and even though it's a line array it doesn't quite sound the same when you're standing up as sitting down so while they look really cool and it's an interesting design i don't feel like they're a hundred percent what you would really want for a moving casual space if you're sitting only then okay cool but i can't imagine like they're really expensive for that uh, the Dolly Epicor 11s, a couple of shots of the cables in the back. Those are Kimber cables. Shout out to them. A quite the mess on the back end here. Nobody using cable risers in this neighborhood. <laughs> it was a very dark room, so it was very difficult to shoot, actually. One of my favorite shots from the whole show. This one turned out really, really sharp. Really good reflections all the way through. Reflections on the back angle. Yeah, that's one of my favorite shots. Um, sounds like they got their crossover messed up. Then, Well, not only that, but because they're in a different position, the, you do have comb filtering because the array of speakers in a line, they're all going to have a different timing because you're – your ears are only at one position. So when you stand up or sit down, you're going on and off axis from everything else. 
So it's, it is a compromise in order to get that many drivers in alignment. Most, uh, most array speakers have the same problem. So it's another type of shot that I got. I actually was, I ended up standing on chairs in order to get this shot. Actually, that's one of my favorite shots. And let me, let me share a photo from my desktop here. Uh, in order to get the shot that I really wanted, I had to do some gymnastics. So I ended up doing this in order to get that shot. <laughs> so that shot that I was talking about earlier, I ended up having to stand on the chair to get that shot of the, the, of the speaker. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the things you have to go through, that's all I'm going to say. I mean, when you love what you're doing, you really have to get get right into it. So this is one of my one of my favorites um, because of the reflections and the angle. It just worked out really well. And I'll be the only one with this shot because uh, the for the rest of the show, except for when Peter brought over this other tower, these were not set up this way. Nobody at the show got to see them side by side except for me and the few people that were there at the time. <laughs> see Phil's face. Um, so I got to take this shot and then Peter put the back. So I'll be the only one with this shot out there. A grand utopias, the statement amps. Um, who needs a step ladder when you got a chair? Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, that's the whole thing. When you're on the spot and you're in that moment, you really have to think about, well, what's possible here? How do I get this shot? And I'm always considering things like, well, what is nobody else doing? What are like, I'm not seeing these 50 year old plus guys, no offense to them, but I'm not seeing anybody in these, you know, these age groups doing things that I can do. They're not crouching on the floor. They're not um, doing these guys. Yeah. The disapproving pants. That's a joke from my Facebook page. I, uh, <laughs> I followed up with this photo on Facebook with a really good response. Let me see if I can find it. Um, I'll see if I can, uh, let's see if I can find his face. Ah, uh, I need to, I need to open this up in a different, uh, hold on. No, I'm almost there. Hold on. It's worth it. I promise it's worth it. Just give me a minute. <laughs> it is absolutely worth it. And I have to open this in a new tab. Oh, it's too small. Oh, no. I'm wasting time. This is like radio dead air. I can't do this. Why are they so small? Why are these images too small? Oh, my goodness. It's, 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 it is 100% worth it. <laughs> Vel is my backup. Absolutely back up. This is good. This is my problem. I can't get down, but I can, I can get down, but getting back up is a challenge. Yeah, I, I totally, um, I relate to that. And that's, I mean, like I was saying with the, the, using the chair and the angles from the ground, like this other, that other photo that I have, um, this one, I was literally on the floor on my stomach taking that photo. And I don't really see a lot of other people, uh, going to those lengths to shoot like that because uh, it, it's it's not easy. Um, I need to open this and I need, I need a bigger, I need a big enough version for this. Oh my God, why is it so protected? It, it doesn't let me show any of the photos because they're all like behind a, a save wall. Oh my God. Pinterest, go away. Stop ruining people's fun. Um, one of them has to be large enough. Come on. Holy.
anyways, I'm just going to share this. That was the face because of the, the pants, the pants that I had on. And I already, I already closed it, but you get the idea. That's, that was the face that was on my pants. Okay. <laughs> God, that took forever. Yeah. Same, same thing. Same thing. This is, yeah. Small, but it was worth it. <laughs> Giggity, yeah, for real. So I find it surprising to hear you say that because I take pics, I do the same and get a good shot. I'm surprised it's not automatic to do that. Um, in for some people, maybe, but it's all about capability and imagination. So maybe for the like like minds, and we already know that we share some of that. It's it's apparent to us, but it isn't apparent to other people, and other people seem to be in the space. And that's why I try to do things that they're not doing. So not everybody shoots photography and the people who do sometimes get trained to do it a certain way. And you know, if you break rules, you end up with something different. So, so one of them has, has to be large enough. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So it's, it, it is about perspective and not all types of people who do certain things have that right perspective. I mean, some people that have brilliant minds don't all work in science or they don't all take photography. It just happens to be that like some of them stand out. It's just like any other bell curve or plotting chart. Like there are outliers and the outliers are the ones that end up creating things and coming up with things that nobody else thinks of because that's just how it works. People's minds are different. The people in general are truly different. They just don't all do the same things. Not not every human's a photographer. I, I mean, maybe if they tried it, we would come up with a lot of new things. SPL, we're showcasing some hi-fi stuff. They reminded me on Facebook, like, we're not just a professional company. We do have, like, all this other stuff. And I was like, yeah, here's a photo of it. I saw it. <laughs> uh, I'm just here in my cave being brilliant. No big deal. <laughs> uh hegel systems i got to talk to anders that video is also on youtube you can check that out this video this photo has actually got a pink pig that's included in the backdrop for the whole room so those are the mofi source point eights and they actually put a pink pig in the background otherwise this room is all white like the snow top mountain but there's a pig there so sense of humor <laughs> Uh, this video got featured in Audiophile Junkies video. They were listening to the Ellipson speakers. These are the Q acoustics up front. So they, all weekend long, they were changing components in here, allowing people to listen to different. Yeah, the pig is, this pig in that, in that image is looking down on us all <laughs> from the mountaintop. His name is Zeus. <laughs> So this is Le Studio du Son. This is the Galleon amp here. These, this is the, I think this is the 75. One of these is a class A amp. One of them's a class A B. I believe this is the class A amp. It's got really nice fins on the side, the TS120 SE special edition. And then the preamp was on the side. I never got a photo of that. Some per listens there. This is the R series. You can tell by the paper cones in the non-beryllium dome. So it's pretty much the same, um, similar sort of cabinet, but different drivers, different crossover. Uh, Q Acoustics, these really small Bluetooth speakers were actually incredible. Um, I got one of the cards for the company because I have a design that I wouldn't mind um, showcasing for them. So let me hear, let me do that real quick. Let me pull up something from my library. Um, this is going to take a little while, actually. Let me see if I can find this really quick. Um, there was an idea that I came up with, an AI design that I came up with that I thought was very like Q acoustic looking. So I wanted to share it with someone from the brand or company in case they were interested because I think the design is very like Q acoustic looking. And I mean, you never know if I get in front of the right person and have an idea for them, then maybe, you know, maybe they'll go for it. So let me open this up in a new tab. And I just want to ask your opinion because we're looking at Q, Q acoustics here. And these Q acoustics typically have like an MTM tweeter in the middle 
Um, I don't know if there's another shot of them. No. So this is the Bluetooth speaker here and their typical sort of like series here. So what do you think of this design? I mean, the, the placement of them is absolutely ridiculous, but in terms of a design concept and MTM basically with woofers, ribbon, tweeter cabinet, um, I thought that that looked really like Q acoustics looking and this, yeah, the, the pig that actually learned to fly. This is from, uh, that's a combination of the phrase and the Pink Floyd song, <laughs> learning to fly. Um, yeah, so this is rather Q acoustic looking, the uh, MTM ribbon. And I thought, you know, maybe, uh, maybe pitch it to them because this is an MTM design here. A little bit similar um and who knows uh, you know opportunity knocks you have to go through that door when it comes up this is a this is actually a photographer that i saw throughout most of the show don't know that he came in with the tad people uh there was a couple of them uh just happened to walk in when they were there and got a couple of shots like this is the full svs shot so this is the svs money shot right there um true voice of reasons here ah you're still on i just got home from a concert ah sweet that's cool thank you for joining good sir i appreciate you and joining in um i may be on for another little while i'm i'm pushing the 56 minute mark right now 57 minutes so i appreciate you true voice of reason in the house nice to see everyone uh, as in my expert opinion yes i like the design Expert opinion, <laughs> 100%. I'm glad to have experts in my field of study. Uh, SVS was out in full force, obviously. Really, really good stuff there. Many, many angles. <clears throat> they actually shared almost all of my SVS angles. <laughs> um, Celine acoustics was here they put these really cool panels on the sides of this room they move the panels around this is a sb acoustics kit speaker there's a couple of other photos here coming up where the cabinet is angled towards the back it's leaning back in time it's also got chamfered top for the tweeter and mid-range alignment uh really cool design absolutely amazing i think they're only like three thousand dollars you could buy a whole kit with drivers crossover and everything and put it together uh, yourself and you're saving a ton of money. These drivers would otherwise cost a fortune in speakers that you can buy anywhere else. So you're eliminating lots of those additional costs with this kind of kit build. And to be honest with you, I'm still tempted to do something like this. The only problem is resell value. You know, nobody knows what it is. It has to be something that somebody really wants. So as I'm not at my end goal yet and don't have a lot of money, I don't see this project doing all that well for me as of yet. I think if I got to like 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, I might buy this kit and do a video on it. Um, but it's going to need a lot more feedback and a lot more uh, income before I can spend money on something like this. So something to look forward to. I happen to get a couple of photos of these cabinets because like I said, I like them. I've considered them as a project, as an option. Uh, I played with the lighting here a little bit, got a bit of the reflection on the bottom, plus the back profile. Um, tried to get this reflection a couple of times. The shadow here of the tweeter. Had a lot of fun with that one. So we were talking about the pool earlier, and there's the pool. Yes, yes, yes. I'm glad my friends know each other. This is amazing for the show. I appreciate that being sarcastic of course of course yes having the conversation between friends with it see this is why i love this community this is the best audio vector this is the fez audio um tube amp that i was discussing earlier another one in that same space i have to adjust my knee i've had knee problems since the show because i uh, put a lot of effort into moving around and unfortunately it takes its toll sometimes. So sitting in the wrong position doesn't do well for me right now. Uh, Emotiva, a lot of other shots here of their power amp, their mono blocks, the back of the receivers. This is the MR1 base X receiver, which I'm not entirely sure, but I might actually be able to upgrade to some of this stuff soon. Um, 
I had a really good conversation with Emotiva when I was down there. So once I am able to part ways with the Denon receiver that I have, I will have the means to bridge the gap to my next project. Um, that may or may not happen. I'll have to respond to those messages I was talking about earlier today and hopefully make a good deal, a fair deal, and then pass that along. Um, it may be a little while before I'm able to get anything new in the house. So that means suffering without any kind of an audio system in my theater for a couple of weeks. But uh, I feel good about that. And I think I can deal with no receiver for a couple of weeks and then buying something really nice at the end of my patience. So Emotiva, yes. So here's the really cool thing about the towers. I'm not sure if anybody noticed. That's a faux leather finish on the top. So it's wrapped, yes, in vinyl, but it's not fake wood. It's faux leather. So it's not, doesn't, doesn't necessarily feel like a leather, but it is textured like a leather. Kind of. You know what I mean? So I needed to get this close-up shot as dusty as it is. It's, it's, it's a hotel room. What do you expect? Uh, there's a money shot for Emotiva. Like, come on now. Uh, let me read back the comments here. Let's. So this is our pool. Nice. There's no P in it. Uh, it's ool. Nice joke. I like it. <laughs> uh, tube amps, even though I have no clue about. I don't know much about tube amps myself. To be uh, to be true, there's there, there's so P in team. That's a, that's funny. <laughs> Uh, Wimhurst generators remind me of the time machines. My age is showing. <laughs> I want it to be leather so bad. That would be cool, but it would be much more expensive. I mean, the only ones that I know that have a real faux leather are the uh, Sonus Faber Lumina speakers that are wrapped in a faux leather. And to be honest, that's, you know, the price points are vastly different. You can get these giant towers for less money than the smallest Lumina pair. The Lumina, the Lumina ones are almost, I guess they're all, they're into the $1,000, $1,100, $1,200 range. The Lumina twos as a bookshelf is like eight, sixteen hundred, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. You could get a pair of these, the largest Emotiva towers for 2000 roughly $2,200 or something like that. So it's a massive price trade-off to get something in leather wrapped or full leather wrapped and made in Italy. Uh, these we know are probably not made in the U S let's just, let's just be honest, but does it matter? I don't know. It's nice, but full leather needs more care. No starts to peel. Um, sometimes depending on what it's made from, or I think that, um, I think that the material science has changed enough now that they're using something with a higher longevity certainly if it's exposed to a uv or like sunlight then yes but most times audio systems are not in the sun but you do have a point in some some places you'd have that problem fonzie speakers watch the yeah that's fun that's hilarious now you're showing your age yeah there you go val called you out <laughs> Uh, we're all friends here. The monitor audio hyphens with the Michi stereo power amps. These are mono blocks. The Michi mono blocks, two of them. Fantastic system. Uh, really, really great sounding. These are in the matte black, so you get to see all the glorious satin finish there. Really great with the, the finish on the Michi. Uh, heat sinks is almost the same. Uh, that's our last photo, everybody. Uh, surprisingly, I'm going to try to rest my knee here a little bit. And I will, what else can I, what else can I scroll to? Does anybody else, do you, does anybody else want to see anything? I'm going to go back to this shot. Does anybody in the chat, we have four people watching. We've had up to six or seven at one point, but not everybody says much. So, I would like to ask if you guys want to see anything else. We're at an hour mark. I might close down the stream now. But if you want to see anything else, then I can play you a couple of things if you want. Or 
Uh, I might be able to play clips, but I'm not really sure if I have a whole lot else that I can share. Uh, a couple of the other videos that I posted to YouTube a while ago are still up and listed. Um, sound demos, stuff like that was really cool. Um, there's a, not a whole lot else that's going on. Um, I did want to talk about one thing. Let's let's do this. I'll open up a new tab. I'm going to share this picture, um, and I want let's 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 talk about let's talk about these. Um, so these are rose work designs. Um, I think it's, um, I don't remember the gentleman's name by name or don't know how to pronounce it. It's J G like my initials, but, um, I want to talk about the woofers. A lot of people that I've heard from in media, they really, really, really rely on their eyes. A lot of people just look at something and because it's new or they don't understand it, they resort to like this basic function mentality and say, oh, that looks broken or burnt or like what's wrong with the surround. And they have this kind of perspective that because it's new and different and they don't understand what they're looking at, then they don't like it. They, you know, they have this kind of reaction that because it looks strange to them that they don't like it. I mean, that's the same as any other type of ignorant behavior when it comes to people, you know, just because someone looks different or strange, you have to treat them a certain way that because it makes you feel uncomfortable and you don't know how to act instead of being curious and asking questions that are open and not loaded or rhetorical i mean why you know you look at something like that and you think well huh like why does it look like that or what is it doing or how does it work or how does it function i mean much like the logo of my youtube channel is a purify driver and that's what these are are purify drivers these are actually i believe these are the six inch woofers not mid-ranges the mid-ranges have a a uh, flat paper cone. These are aluminum with a proper dust cap. So I believe these are the six and a half woofers paired with an AMT tweeter or a ribbon tweeter of some kind in a generous waveguide. And these are actually 10 inch woofers with passive radiators. So Vel is saying, I love those edges. That's cool. I like, I appreciate it. Yeah. And yeah, hum humans do that a lot really because their thinking is very based on their own world. They don't, they're not considering possibilities outside of their experience. So when they see something that looks like that, they think, oh, these must be broken because, you know, the only time I've ever seen something that isn't round on a surround, a surround cone or whatever, it was broken. It was destroyed. It was foam. It was rubber that had a problem. And, you know, their limited experience and their limited uh, capability mentally or otherwise leads them to say some ignorant stuff like, oh, they must be broken or what's wrong with them or they make fun of it. And yeah, humans do that a lot. And they find out what it actually does. You realize these are actually really incredible designs. So uh, this is why we don't believe a first thought that pops in our heads. Brains just come up with a J just our brain doing what it knows, not what it needs to learn. Yes, exactly. It's like reaction. So Say, have you tried YouTube channel Prime Thanatos? Uh, lots of stuff from Black Bandcamp, SoundCloud. He seems to put on a show. So what is, I, I'm trying to, collection for artists. And, oh, we're talking about music, so that's interesting. Uh, no, I've never heard of that stuff before. Bluetooth speaker with six and a half inch woofer in it. That's really cool. I would love to see which one that is, actually, if you can send me the model. Um, familiar with silly noodles. Yeah, exactly. Just sticking to what you know, instead of like being curious and looking for things that you don't quite understand and being like allowing yourself to be vulnerable and learning about something new. And that's how designers think the designers and engineers out there think of things and allow their minds to come up with ideas. And then they explore those ideas to a valuable result. So when you have stuff that looks very different like this, like Purify drivers and Class D amps that are very different or inside a glass tube 
or they're designed with some different features instead of being like, Oh, that must be broken. That can't work. I've, you know, I've never seen that before. So I'm going to let my limited experience speak for me kind of mentality. Like, no, be, be curious. Like take a look and figure out what's going on here. I mean, these are probably some of the best sounding measuring speakers that people have heard, but you may never hear them if you're so skeptical and like avoidant. Uh, vaporwave type of music generally to geared towards 80s style. Oh, okay. So uh, in other words, I wouldn't like it. <laughs> to, uh, to be honest with you, vaporwave is not my favorite genre. It's usually uh, very synthy, too slow. Not my not my kind of vibe. Um, so yes, this, this is... The photo album I have scrolled through today, recapping the video um, of PMA magazine. They issued all of my photos. I added the hashtag, not the hashtag, but the logo for them and all their photos. So this is a journal, a photo journal of my work, uh, which they, you know, they have me featured in their articles here. I've done articles for Toronto Audio Fest. All of those articles are still featured and available to view um and now i have a photo journal as well so there it is my thanks to everyone all of look at this they even linked all of my stuff so the youtube instagram facebook linkedin spotify that is because of this my new business cards. My new business cards are now available. Um, I have included them for people at shows. And the reason why we have all the links is because of the codes that are at the back. Um, I don't know if it's going to work, but let's just try this. There's eight people online right now. Eight people that are here. If you can screenshot right now, let's see if this works. I'm just going to hold this up. Try to be really still. No, it's not going to focus on anything that close. I don't think that those are going to work, but there's my email as well. I'm giving it all away for you right now. So I have these QR codes on the back. No, I can't get them any closer. It's not going to focus. So anyways, they're available. You can message me and um, yeah. Very nice card. So all those links are available on this uh the photo thing, I'm going to put it into chat so everybody can have a look. So there is, there's the link to the photo library. And um, I appreciate everybody for coming and watching. I, I really do. It's, I'm truly grateful for the opportunities in media right now to be able to uh, shoot photography, to shoot video, to meet up with my friends at shows, to genuinely have a really good time with my friends at shows and do these things Expona audio fest is coming up or Expona audio show whatever you want to call it um it's coming up in two weeks i will be there uh, i am going with jay again which is going to be awesome we've got some stuff planned i will be meeting up with a lot of people on saturday night um it should be a lot of fun I may do the same kind of content that I've done here, photos as well as some videos. Depends on what becomes available. It's hard for me to say uh, what is what until I get there. I mean, things change, of course, but right now it'll be similar sort of thing. If I get in touch with, um, ah, yes, like I was flying to Florida, I, I did alone. Uh, of course, I knew a lot of people there, but, you know, I... That's not quite the same as like traveling with someone. Of course, I don't mind traveling on my own. I'm not really, you know, I've been independent for a long time, so I don't mind such a thing, but I appreciate the empathy there. Um, it usually does end up being more entertaining. So in that sense, it's great that I have someone to go with. Um, otherwise, yeah, that's, that's about it for me. I don't have a whole lot else to share. Um, unless you want to see my Spotify playlist, you guys want to see the Spotify playlist, I can probably link you that. Uh, let me see if I can load that on here. Spotify should start up right away with my account. Maybe not. Will it sign me in right away? No. 
that won't sign in right away. Will it sign in? I can't share that tab though. Yeah, I can't sign into my Spotify that way. So anyhow, that'll be it for me. Uh, if nobody has any other questions or comments on stuff, um, let me see. Will this, no, it's not going to work either. Well, I can scroll through it, I guess. Um, let me see, share this tab. There you go. So my Spotify is available. The link should be there. I don't know if, if I can link this. Can I copy link to profile? Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> so I'll do that. <laughs> Dang, you didn't realize it's after 1 a.m. Thank you very much for sticking around. I appreciate you. So here's the, this is a folder for the 2024 audio demo tracks. There's a lot of fun stuff on here. I would really prefer that people play this one instead of cashmere. This is basically the same artist artist, but it's um, it's a different track. So I recommend that. Um, did you ever get back to that one room to see if the device was a CD transport? I can't remember which room that was. Now you're going to have to remind me later on. Um, I can't remember at this point. Uh, I believe was that was, I don't even remember where that question came up to be honest in the three days. I mean, with the limited amount of attention spent, I already have going back to check on rooms. I'm not even really sure. Uh, say so Spotify makes me mad, but I'll try to check out the playlist. So I'm wondering what is, what about Spotify is difficult, but then also if you just, if anybody just wants to screenshot, the names of these tracks then you can use the names of the tracks and just look it up somewhere else um you could do that <laughs> uh i am still on discord i still have a discord channel that has the same name my discord is open right now so i can actually send links to that that group i can send invites in the in the chat if i open the the link uh so there you go the the link for discord is in the chat right now this is the playlist i'm going to sh shift this down a little bit there we go so again, people can screenshot and save that. And if you don't like Spotify for the fact that it's not high level audio, um, I think I started with, O. and uh, let me check your YouTube messages. Uh, okay, cool. Oh, which brand starts with O? That's really interesting. Um, so let me move this down a little bit more. There's only a couple other, this one at the bottom. I think this is one of my favorites now. Um, this song actually surprised the hell out of me. It's got a lot of low end. This artist is a very low, like baritone type of vocalist, uh, has some incredible stuff. Um, I do have multiple playlists. My actual selections, my audio hi-fi selections are, uh, in this other group. Let me see. Where are my, this is my num my actual hi-fi playlist. So if you want to get to this specific playlist, then you can check that out. Um, Spotify isn't difficult. It just doesn't uh, give me control over what I want to listen to unless I give them money. Yes, of course, you have to pay for certain things like access. So that's, of course, that's to be expected. I actually here, I'll tell you the truth. I actually stopped using things like Pirate Bay and other types of uh, torrent streaming services, Apple Music, whatever, for all that kind of stuff a long time ago. When I could start to afford to buy tracks and buy music, I started buying music. I spent a long time trying to do it for free and got too frustrated with that whole process. And I understand we all have to make choices, but I just want to say from my perspective and point of view that I started buying CDs and having the tracks of my own and finding other ways where I can keep my library and do like um, move through a music collection more efficiently and more readily rather than facing all the frustrations, giving myself any bit of frustration anywhere in life is not worth it. I don't 
give a shit what it happens to be that the 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 best ways to reduce the negativity in your life the more free you are with the rest of your energy to deal with the priorities that have to be dealt with in my perspective that's the way it works you eliminate all of the the useless unnecessary type of noise that way your body and your mind and your heart can focus on the things that really need to be taken care of so if I have to pay extra, if I have to wait longer, if I have to do certain things in order to alleviate my stress, that's what I'm going to do. That's why I pay for Spotify. Yeah, it's over there. <laughs> Hell yes. Thank you. Exactly. I am hopeful. Inuos room. Yes, you're right. So at the front of that room, I'll have to find out if one of them was a CD transport. If... um. I know the distributor so I can go back and actually look at what models they had in that room and figure it out. Yes. 100%. Um, so yeah, this is my, this is my more recommended hi-fi list. The 2024 list was just something of a last minute thing. So if you guys want to go on here, this is Spotify hi-fi selections. I also have the same thing on Cobuzz, but I can't really share that. Uh, I'm going to go back to this tab now. Um, I will open up my Cobuzz cause I have it here and I'll just screen share the window Um, my playlists, it's basically all the same thing. Hi-Fi selection playlist, share. Can I share? Share, copied. Okay. Instead of showing the screen, I'm going to copy. This is the, this is the Cobuzz playlist. If you look up the Siphonics audio name, you could probably find it on title as well but I'm going to open my title now just so I can get that link. I haven't been on there in a while, but I think the link is still available. To be honest with you, I think that most of the songs are the same anyways. Uh, share. Copy link. Okay. And here is my title playlist. It's basically all the same songs. Now, everybody's happy. Yay. Except for the MQA people, which... Don't have a company anymore. <laughs> uh, True Voice of Reason says along the lines of thinking of the PS Audio's recent post, the stereo multi-channel. See my point? Post, there's so much that resonates with what you just said. Um, stereo or multi-channel, see my post. Uh, yes, I guess I have to see the post. And I just said a lot of things, so I don't know what... It is that I just said that it aligns with. <laughs> Vel's laughing because of the MQA thing. I'm not sure if you followed along with what happened to MQA, but yeah, that's an inside joke. So yeah, title, Koba's Spotify. Now you guys have the links for everything. Everybody should basically be happy. Uh, the Discord link is up. I can accept people from joining there. The chat should be kept afterwards. Uh, I have no problems there. MQ went away. That's a good one. Thank you for that one. That's another amazing screenshot. Check check that out. <laughs> that's that's an amazing amazing phrase. MQ went away. <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, thank you for that. True voice of reason. This really is a uh, a comedy show. <laughs> I knew MQA wouldn't last. Well, the whole thing is it's that's let's save that for another video. Let me just say, let me just say, thank you. Um, stop sharing this. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you, Vel, for being here. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. True voice of reason. Thank you to my friends that have joined subscribers, new subscribers that have joined to see my channel as of lately, all of the, Montreal photos are available on the PMA website. Well, almost all of them. Uh, there are a number of shots I didn't share. Of course, they're for me only. The whole idea is that they are grossly watermarked on purpose because event after event after event, I see my photos being taken by brands and companies who don't give me any credit or are not looking to uh, be collaborative. They're not paying for anything. They're basically just stealing them like a bunch of scavengers and using them for their own ends. So every time I see that I am encouraged and I'm 
emboldened by the fact that, of course, they're stealing the photos that I take because obviously they're worth something. But they're doing it in such a sketchy, shady kind of way that I lose respect for that kind of process. So I'm going to say it again, like I always say in my Instagram videos. Don't be a scavenger and just ask me for them. You and I can work something out. Don't let me catch you in the in the public space or in the advertisement space taking my stuff. Just work with me and then call it a day. Like, why do you have to be a scavenger? I mean, if you own a company, you're part of a company, you're part of a media team, you already know the deal. You understand how stuff works. If you violate copyright, which some of them do, then you're going to have a bigger problem. And on top of that, if we happen to get screen captures and all my friends will know what shots I've taken, if you get screen captures stealing or taking somebody else's stuff, you know who looks bad? So don't do it. Just contact me and we can get some stuff done. Uh, my pleasure, as always. I am grateful that you're here. I am glad to do this to enter be entertaining and all of that stuff dad jokes <laughs> so here to cough for here here we'll 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 give you we'll give you a big virtual hug does everybody want to get in <laughs> that's funny um a new ai that can get rid of watermarks yes i know i know there is and that's why i told them that's why i'm doing videos um, I have more proof now that they're my photos than any of them are going to work fast enough to get. All of my photos are now on this video as well as watermarked in two different places with two different kinds of things. And like I said, one of the best photos that I took at the whole show, I am the only one with that angle. So if anybody ever takes that photo, you know exactly where it came from. So my team will see it. Don't even try it. <laughs> the 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 best the the best part is is the 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 shadows with the 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 muscles i have these like these ridges on the back which you can't really you can't really see anyways it's 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 all about that 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 line right there that that stuff right that's i can't even do it right <laughs> And the, the compass to keep me, anyway. <laughs> I am a brat. <laughs> um, thank you guys for being here. Ridgeback, yes, yes. Um, uh, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, thank you, True Voice of Reason, Daniel, Val. Thank you for hanging out. To the five other people that are watching and not saying anything, thank you for watching and joining. I Hopefully you're laughing as well and taking notes. I really, really appreciate it. If we know each other at all, then let me know you watched. Um, if you care to comment on anything else that I have done later on to let me know that this worked out, this live video at 1.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for those who are watching around the world. Um, thank you, as always. I appreciate it. The Instagram is growing. The YouTube channel is growing. The Facebook exposure is growing. My articles have been published in PMA Magazine, Hi-Fi Pig Magazine. My photos have been shared on mono and stereo. They have also been shared and borrowed by other brands. I've gotten in contact with a lot of different companies to do photography. I've been invited to all kinds of industry dinners and interviews, and it's happening. Uh, the door is open a little bit slowly. Of course, I've been in this thing for about four years I don't expect a lot to happen very quickly, but I am super grateful that it is happening. And like I said, if anything that I have done is not of any value and people think that it's no good, I don't know why brands and people and companies are stealing my stuff. So obviously it's worth something. The haters are going to say otherwise. And as long as they spell properly and they don't insult anybody in my comment section, your hate can stay there. That's fine. I mean, just follow the guidelines and don't waste people's time. I, You can say whatever you have to say. Just, you know what I mean? Draw a line. Be 
respectful is the line. And if I find that it's not respectful, respectful of either people's time or the reason why we have these channels, then I'm going to remove it, period. You can try again. C'est la vie. Um, true voice of reason. See you later. Uh, have a good night. Peace and love. And bench warmer. It's still okay. That's, that's funny. <laughs> That's okay. I have dyslexia. I can read everybody's bad spelling. <laughs> okay. See you guys later in the next one. Thank you for joining today. Um, as always, I appreciate it. And we'll see you all in the next video. Take it easy. Rest. I uh, will see you on Instagram and Facebook videos in the next couple of days. I go live and shoot a lot of content. So we'll see you later. Have a great night. Bye-bye.